Hi, how's it going? This is resident of Collinwood for YouTube, resident under slash of under slash Collinwood for BitChute, and I'm here to do a Dark Shadows video tonight. Guys, Christmas is almost upon us, so I'm going to try to keep on giving Dark Shadows videos before the end of 2020, and don't worry, I'll have plenty of Dark Shadows stuff for you in 2021, not just for the channel, but for the blog. I have a very special story coming Easter just for you guys. But my video tonight is about the Leviathan people. More importantly, how the Leviathan people were the NWO, a.k.a. the New World Order of Dark Shadows. And you might say, well, who's the NWO? Who's the New World Order? Well, if you're not familiar with professional wrestling, as they say in the South... Or wrestling. If you're not familiar with wrestling, wrestling is the equivalent of a male soap opera. And that's something wrestling has in common with shows, not just like Dark Shadows, but Days of Our Lives, All My Children, As the World Turns, Guiding Light, Young and the Restless, and etc., etc., etc. So, wrestling does have that similarity to Dark Shadows. It is a soap opera in a sense. In many ways, in fact. So who was the NWO? Well, the NWO started off with two people, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, and they called themselves the Outsiders. And they kept coming in through the crowd, taunting the WCW superstars, attacking them, you know, so forth and so forth. And they had challenged three of their guys to a match, and they said they had a mystery partner. Well, Bash at the Beach happens. The pay-per-view happens. You have Hall and Nash teaming against Savage, Sting, and Lex Luger. And by the end of the match, here comes Hulk Hogan. Um, to seemingly save the day, you think. But Hogan rips the shirt, drops the leg drop on Randy Savage, and turns heel. Now, where that compares to the Leviathan people... The Leviathan people, in many ways, remind me of Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. They are, in fact, the outsiders. Hell, not only are they the outsiders, they're, they're literally from underneath the earth. So, as Angelique says, they're, they're creatures that are they're, they're serpent-like creatures, as she describes them. And when Angelique's familiar with you, you know you're evil, <laughs> okay? So... They decide to approach Barnabas while he's back in 1795. And they say about him, ha you know, they have Josette's ghost captured and all that stuff. So they put him under their control, so to speak. So these two, the, the Leviathan people start off as two people, just like Hall and Nash did. And in many ways, Barnabas Collins does compare to Hulk Hogan. And no, I'm not meaning the bulging biceps or the say your prayers, take your vitamins, the slogans, and all that shit. No, 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 no. What I'm meaning is, look, Hulk Hogan, in fact, did, once upon a time, long before he wore the red and the yellow and say your prayers, take your vitamins, brother, he was actually a heel. And then he became a baby face, you know, went to w when he went to WWE, he wore the red and yellow. Vince McMahon made him larger than life, as did Hogan made himself that way, too. And he launched the, the biggest thing, perhaps, ever, Hulkamania. Now, you could debate that Barnabas Collins from A Dark Shadows is Hulk Hogan-esque. No, he doesn't have the bulging biceps, but he's as big as a name as Hulk Hogan is. Therefore, him being the third man of the Leviathans is in fact shocking. I mean, could they de have done it as more of a surprise? Sure, sure they could have. But I don't mind the way they did it because when they brought it back, Barnabas was really going all in on this whole Leviathan thing. At least at first. But I do think who really became the Hulk Hogan of the Leviathan people ultimately sort of to embrace the egotisticalness of the character was actually Jeb Hawks, of all people. Jeb Hawks 
my daughter is going, ah. <laughs> but, and, but anyway, my daughter, oh, yeah, my daughter. <laughs> oh, God. But anyway, Jeb Hawks becomes so egotistical and so unbearable to Barnabas. It's like, look, you're supposed to follow this rule book. And I do think at first Barnabas was like, look, you were supposed to follow this. But he didn't seem to give a shit about the rules. Just like the NWO and Hulk Hogan. They didn't give a shit about the rules. Mainly, Hogan himself didn't give a shit about the rules when he was a heel. So though this comparison is a bit odd in many, many ways, I do feel at times that the Leviathan people are a bit like the NWO. They wanted to take over everybody. Now, the funny thing is, here's where the comparison continues. The NWO started off with three people, right? Well, two, then it became three. Well, three became four. Four became five. Five became six. And, you know, Eric Bischoff, who created the NWO, he had to find roles for all these people to play within the NWO. Now, he did a good job, but there were just so many people, it became ridiculous. That's sort of how I feel about the Leviathan people sometimes, it had been okay if they had just kept a certain number of people. Well, then they recruit Elizabeth. Then they're recruiting this one. <laughs> it's like, you know, Paul Stoddard is sort of a part of them in a weird way. They got the two shopkeepers. It's like, how many people do you need? And then um, Sky Rumpson of all... Sky Rumpson was sort of like, you know, I, I equivalent Barnabas to Hulk Hogan, but in many ways... Sky Rumson should have been the original third man in this because I did not see it coming. I, I got to give you that. I'll give them that. Sky Rumson was one of the best heel twist ever. Though I felt so because I feel it made me feel something sorry for Angelique. This woman was literally in love with this son of a bitch, and he's a heel. Beautiful. Fucking beautiful. I love it. Fucking love Dark Shadows. And no, I don't care if I'm swearing because I'm excited talking about it. It was so beautiful. It was like, you dick. But it's like, you, you didn't even care about what Angelique did before. It's like you literally felt sorry for her. And then when she Barnabas hugged her, he felt sorry for her. That's saying something. Beautiful, beautiful job, beautiful. The Leviathan arc, though chaotic at times, it is good. It's not awful to me. I do feel there were some consistency issues, sure, because they couldn't stay consistent between, well, is their weakness the werewolf or is their weakness the ghost? They gave them too many weaknesses. I do wish they would have just, they, they did end up using a werewolf in some sense. But I do wish they would have stuck with the werewolf. Did Jeb Hawks deserve to live? Did Jeb Hawk Hawks deserve to turn babyface? Because remember, Jeb Hawks does not give a shit about the, the rules or the book of the Leviathan people. Which it makes you wonder, is Jeb Hawks a true creation of the Leviathan people? Yeah, he is, but in the same sense... He sort of turns on his own people because he falls in love with Carolyn. But in the same sense, he, he's not even obeying the book, you know, or even listening to Barnabas. Granted, Barnabas is trying to do everything to under, undermine him because at this point, Barnabas is sort of turned on them and he's playing, trying to play it against them. But he still isn't listening to the code of the book in many ways. And it is sort of funny that Jeb does this. I do find it sort of curious and suspicious. Did Jeb deserve to live? I love Christopher Peanock's performance as Jeb Hawks. I really do. But Dark Shadows, just like with the NW, they made mistakes with the NW, my friends. The biggest mistake I think they made in Dark Shadows, they kept turning heels babyface. And if you're not familiar with the, that term, babyface are good guys and heels are bad guys. 
and yes, that is a wrestling term. You see, I'm keeping the wrestling theme attached to this for a reason. Because, look, when I want a heel, I want a full-blown heel. I want a son of a bitch who I hate. Count Patofi, Angelique, you know, the um, Blair, Nicholas Blair. Again, Reverend Trask, Trask, Gregory Trask. So those are characters I hated, and they were great heels. But then there's the ones that Dark Shadows turned babyface. Again, you know, I know the ghost of Quentin has been, has, they said the ghost of Quentin wasn't really Quentin, it was Gregory Trask. Okay, so Quentin isn't actually healed, but when you do meet Quentin, the real Quentin, he does have heel tendencies, but he's not a full-blown heel. He's sort of a, a neutral character, a character who's neither good or bad. So I guess I can't classify Quentin as a heel. But, you know, Michael Stroka, they didn't really turn his character babyface, so I can't count him. But here's what, when they turned Angelique, not just they turned her babyface, they turned... Uh, Adam was heel and baby face, you know. So again, there's then there's um, who do I keep trying to say? Oh, Jeb Hawks, Jeb Hawks turning Jeb Hawks baby face. I get why they did it, but in the same sense, I felt that he had done enough for me to warrant death. When he went off of Widow's Hill, I didn't say, again, did I feel sorry for him? Hell no. Did I feel sorry for Carolyn? Yes. Yes, I did. I don't know why I have a spoon in my head. But yeah, I felt sorry for Carolyn. For Jeb, hell to the no. Because he was a heel at heart. I mean, he had been a heel that whole time until those <laughs> last couple, not last couple episodes, but the build up to him, him and Carolyn. It just, to me... I love Christopher Pinnock's performance as Jeb Hawks, either good or bad, either babyface or heel, to keep the wrestling terminology alive in this video. But again, you can't keep turning every character baby from a heel to a babyface or back again. They did this with Burke Devlin, by the way. They also did this with Barnabas Collins. But I get why, though, with them. With Now, there's characters they didn't turn babyface, Matthew Morgan, they, he was a heel. Um, I, I can't really say Roger. Is Roger a heel? No, Roger's more one of a, a middle character. Is Jer, is Jason McGuire a heel? <sighs> hmm. You know, I've always said if you have to think about this answer, the answer is usually no. I don't think Jason is a full-blown heel. That look, there's asshole heels and there's complete asshole heels. Jason McGuire is is the latter. He's the asshole heel. He's not a complete asshole because if he were a complete asshole, he would have been murdering people by then. I do think he, you know, con men. The first person they con is themselves. And that's what Jason does also well. He cons himself that he can get he can get away with his shit. Obviously he doesn't. They kill him off. Is Jason evil? It depends on your interpretation of the word, but for me, no, I don't consider him evil or a full blown heel. I don't consider him a baby face, mind you. No, he's definitely not that. Is Willie Loomis a heel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willie Loomis is a heel in many, many ways, and Willie was on the verge of being the best heel out of the two and the most dangerous until he decided to open the coffin of Barnabas Collins. Well, not intentionally, but he found it accident. He thought there were jewels in there, which there were, but there was also a vampire in there. So I do feel Willie could have been more of the dangerous of the two. 
It just, he ended up working for Barnabas Collins, who was a lot more dangerous than Jason McGuire could ever dream about being. Now back to the Leviathan people. Are, were they heels? Absolutely. They were beautiful heels. I do wish Dark Shadows would have had the effects to pull off the snake-like creatures. I don't know why they couldn't have used maybe trained snakes like pythons or something to pull this off. Um, maybe someone can answer that for me. I don't know. But they, they really... Them being scared of the werewolves, I liked. But again, they went to ghosts too. Oh, they're scared of ghosts. It's like, okay, pick one. I love the breathing. The breathing in the room and stuff reminds me of, and this is prior to John Carpenter's Halloween. It reminds me of Michael Myers. So yes, the Leviathan people, they were full-blown heels. They never were baby faces. Sky Rumson, full-blown heel, not a baby face. He acted like a baby face, but secretly was a heel. Uh, the guy who Michael Shore could play, full-blown heel. So I like that aspect. I love heels make baby faces that much more interesting. If you have a good baby, if you have a good baby face, it's because you have a great heel. And vice versa, too. So again, I hope I made my comparison to the NWO and the Leviathan people. Again, the Leviathan people had too many ended up having too many members. Plus all the little plot twists. Again, they're not bad. They just needed to be more consistent with them. I do enjoy the Leviathan arc. It, it is it cringy? I think that some of the inconsistencies get cringy during it. But you know what? At the end of the day, I do think they did do a good job. I love the breathing. It did bring a creepy atmosphere to it. And I will leave a link in the description to the NWO thing, and you can see for yourself what I'm talking about. And maybe you see the same thing, and maybe you don't. If you don't, that's all well and good. I hope you enjoyed this video. Guys, you have a merry, merry Christmas. I know it's early still. We're still not at Christmas. Maybe I'll do a Dark Shadows Christmas video for you guys. I'll tell you what. Here's what I'll do. You can request me to do any Dark Shadows video for Christmas. And no matter how many requests I'll get, if I get two, if I get one, if I get three, I will do all the Dark Shadows requested videos on Christmas. It may not be Christmas morning, but it'll be Christmas evening or night or whatever. But it will be done on Christmas. So that's my thing. If you request me... If you have any requested Dark Shadows videos for me to do, you want me to do a retrospective, anything, I will gladly do it on this channel. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope I brought some insight into this craziness that I was talking about. I, I do find it interesting, before I uh, sign off here, I do find the Leviathan people very interesting and very dark. And they were perhaps the dark, the... You know, from a tone standpoint, they had the potential to be the darkest characters in Dark Shadows. I still tip my hat to Count Patofe a bit, but hey, the Leviathan people are very, very interesting in many, many ways. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys, hopefully on Christmas. If you guys make requests, I'll do the videos. Have a good one.